Well, welcome back, guys. We are back for round number two because there's just so much to cover on this topic. Uh, a lot of you guys have responded and commented in the video, which I really appreciate. The good, the bad, the ugly, I'll take it all. Um, I'm still learning about you know the different facets of this. Um, there's a lot to cover. So what I want to do is just go back and dive into the comments that you guys made. Uh, there's a lot of comments, um, so I'll just kind of hit on the, the ones that I appreciated a whole lot and they were very helpful to me. Um, but yeah, there's AI, this whole AI thing is very new. I mean, mid journey just popped up two years ago, two years ago. This is all in our lifetime. Uh, I, I searched on Google. When did, when was AI art created? It said like 1960, 1970. I think that's talking about something else, but this, what we're dealing with today, this is very new. Um, but anyway, I, I want to understand it. I want to learn it. I want to know, you know, what I'm talking about. And, uh, as, as everybody should, right. I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to be called a hypocrite and all this stuff. Um, so let's take a look at the comments. Let's see what you guys said. And, uh, let's, let's work through this. I think there's a lot of minutia. There's a lot of things to kind of work through. And so let's, let's go through it. Let's look at it. So, <clears throat> so this guy will excel, um, real quick. He said to play devil's advocate, let's address some things. First, he doesn't have to show anything, which is true. He does not have to show anything. That was not part of the rules. And remember, we're just talking about this McFarland contest, right? Just let's keep it in perspective. This is about a contest where McFarland said no AI art would be accepted. And um, it seems like AI art has won the contest. So first, he does not have to show anything. Sure. Correct. Also, it'd be incre incredibly easy to fake. You could take the final image, trace it, make some sketchy lines over it to make it look like a rough, move it to the bottom layer. Second, him posting. Okay, so yes, he could do that. You could reverse engineer it. People have done that, I'm sure. And you just make it look like it's the, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, that's from the Procreate argument. Just Procreate will show you your work. It records it. So just have him show his work. Um, you could fake that. That is That is totally true. You could do that. Second, him posting them all on the same day doesn't actually prove anything. You're right. It doesn't prove anything. It is just highly skeptical, in my opinion. Um, uploading something doesn't mean you made it on the same day. That's that's true. That is correct. The making food metaphor doesn't work with art. You don't have to grow the apple tree to claim you made the apple pie. You mixing in ingredients and putting them in the oven does actually qualify you as making food. Now, had you said you ordered a pizza and had it delivered, that would make more sense. Um, this one, I I think you're look maybe reading into it a little too too much. I all I said was you go to Costco, you pick up a dish, and I didn't say pre-made dish, which maybe I should have. I kind of didn't say that, but that's what I was implying. So you pick up a pre-made dish, you take that home, you stick it in the oven, you put your little pusher buttons, you cook it, and then what pops out, you can't really take credit for it. Like you, you didn't make that dish. You just heated it up in the oven. You didn't make it. The guys at Costco did. That was my argument um, or my analogy anyway. And someone else, <clears throat> let's see, had a similar analogy. They said this squid po quo. Imagine someone going to a three-star restaurant, ordering a few dishes, then grabbing them all, putting them on the same plate, then serving it at their own food cart and saying they cooked it um, and that they are a three-star chef on those grounds alone. It's ludicrous. I think that analogy works perfect too. You're taking something someone else did and you're taking credit for it. You know, it's, it's the same thing with the, the kid in, you know, fifth grade who comes to the school with his artwork and he signed his name on it, but lo and behold, it's his brother's or it's his dad's and he's taking credit for it. He's, he's basically lying. Uh, he says, it's not just the stealing of art, it's the claim of ownership in the face of being confronted for stealing it. There's so much legality around sampling with music for just this reason, and it's and it's desperately needed for art. So, uh, Will Excel, okay, sorry I messed up on my analogy, um, but anyway, he says, you draw digitally, did you create the program you used? Did you put together the drawing tablet? How deep are we going to say who made what? Again, I think you're kind of going a little bit too deep on it. I don't think we need to go that far. Uh, as comic book artists, we use reference. We don't give credit to every person of the world that made that possible. We didn't invent the cart, but we're drawing it. Why aren't we giving credit to that 
artist who designed it. It's a minefield surrounded by quicksand. Again, I, I, I don't agree with you there. There's, you know, there's no need to, I mean, if I draw a tree, if I draw a, a cart, it'd be silly to just, you know, oh, after God, God created that tree after blah, blah, blah. Leonardo da Vinci, he created this and that. Like, why go there? That's that's ridiculous. Um, he says, lastly, also, this isn't in defense of Robot 9000. I personally think he's lying because it's in his best interest to keep up the charade. But if you're going to criticize, we have to do it methodically and unhypocritically. Unhypocritically. I think he might have meant to say hypercritically, unhypocritically. Um, hopefully, he didn't mean to say hypocritically because I don't think I'm being a hypocrite here. If I am, you'll tell me how. But um, this, I'm methodically, yes, I'm trying to do this methodically. And and look, I'll be the first to admit, this is there's so many unknowns. I'm going off of prima facie evidence. What I see on the surface, I'm going off base of what I see. Uh, and what I see just makes me very, very skeptical of this guy. And yeah, so I don't believe him. I think his his attitude sucks. I think, okay, he says he's a professor. Now... Okay. Now this is just me. This is just me putting myself in, in, in his shoes. If I'm a professor and this whole AI thing is super new, I think I would have the wherewithal and the, the smarts to be like, you know what? It might raise some red flags. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to cut this off at the, at the beginning. I'm going to post my process work. I'm going to show it and just kind of like get it out there and just alleviate any uh, flack or feedback I might get from this saying that I cheated like you're, you're a professor, like, shouldn't you know everything that's going on with art? And, and that's my thinking, like, dude, you're, you're like surprised you're getting all this flack for putting up this, this artwork and your whole portfolio on Instagram anyway, is just AI art that you did not create an AI generated program did it. So anyway, that's, that's my thought. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. It is a lot of speculation what else can we do at this point? But I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to understand and I need to hear things like um, some other folks have mentioned hive. You know, I mentioned hive in, the, hive in the video that you could put art into this hive program and it'll tell you whether it is AI generated. Well, come to find out hive is not as um, it's not as uh, you can't count on it as much as I thought you could. People are saying they've, they put like uh, art germ, Art germs are into it, Stanley Art Germ Lau, and um, it comes back as it registers as AI, which we know, stupid bugs. Um, we know Stanley does not use AI. He's just an incredible artist, and he has a style that's just, it's clean. It's so like soft and brushy. It's beautiful. So, anyway, so we can't trust Hive 100%. So, like, again, like, what are we left with? It's like, <clears throat> it's crazy. There's really nothing we can like count on. Can we take this guy's word for it? I don't think so. I, I don't trust him. You know, uh, can, it, there's just so many unknowns and, you know, again, this is just me saying, I don't trust the dude. I, I don't, why not post some, something to say like, look, this is what I did. Trust me. It's legit. I haven't seen any of that. Um, so anyway, it's frustrating. I'm airing my frustration. I'm telling you my speculation. And uh, I need to hear these things. Okay, next we got JEQ videos. He said, it may be like that. You do have people that might simply be entering a prompt. Okay. And and again, just to be clear, that's what I think this guy did. 100% entered a prompt, got out this this heap thing, and then the, the Cygor and then the Hellspawn one. I think it's 100% AI. That's what I'm talking about. So when, when I'm saying AI artists are not artists, if it's 100% AI, you cannot say that that person who put in the prompt is an AI artist. I don't think it's, that should count. Uh, you have to do something with your hand. You have to put some sort of human effort into it for me to actually consider calling you an artist. Um, so many people, most people, they download the programs, they go on mid journey. They're not artists. They're just normal people that want to do some cool stuff that they, they don't have a artistic bone in their body, but they're like, I can create cool stuff with this. So I think they go on there and they put in the prompts and they get some awesome stuff from this program. I think that's what a lot of people do. 
Now, I would be willing to call that person an artist if it was somebody like like me or Stanley Archer and Lau, you know, you name it. They're, they have a portfolio that shows, look, they do all this work. They do traditional work. It, it would show in your portfolio, right? And so then I go and I get some AI stuff. I get some AI images. And then I take something from that that I see that I like. And then I incorporate it in my artwork. Thank you. Notification. Um, I incorporate it in my artwork. I'm not taking that generated image and then making that my artwork and just putting my name on it and saying, oh, look what I did. It's got to have some sort of human. Uh, you have to mess with it. it. It's kind of like the some of the copyright things. You know, you download an image from Google. If you don't manipulate that image at all and then somehow put it into your artwork in a huge way and you don't mess with it, then you could be, you know, someone could come after you for copyright law um, for using their image without, without, you know, permission or probably just permission. You don't even have to, even if you do credit them, I don't know, they could still probably come after you. Um, again, I'm not a lawyer. That's just my take on it. But a lot of the images say, you know, they're, you know, you have to, they're under copyright. All right. So whenever I take an image off of Google and if I, I'm going to use it in my artwork, I manipulate it. I, I change the color. I make it, you know, I, I blur it. I, there's some thing that I have to do to it to make it my own. And that part of the, the image is only one small piece of the overall picture. Like for instance, I'm working on this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, uh, first and last, I call it image. It's on my YouTube channel. I took an image from Google of clouds, put them in the background, you know, tweaked them, resized them, uh, took some off, added some, blurred it. And then, you know, I, I made it, it was like a multiplied layer or something overlay one or the other, but it then becomes part of my image, but it's not, you know, it's just one piece and it's clouds. Now, if it was someone's copyrighted image, you know, that might be one thing, but you have to, from what I understand, you have to change that image somehow, some way. Uh, you can't just slap it on there and just use it. That's how I understand it. If I'm wrong, correct me. Okay. So, but there are also cases where people might be entering their own artwork into the AI to guard the, guide the process. Uh, or they might be using an iterative process where they develop reference with the AI and then develop concepts digitally or traditionally based on the reference ideas. So... Hmm. They might be using an iterative process where they develop reference with the AI, then develop concepts digitally or traditionally based on the references. And I think that's what I'm talking about. Like if I see something that I like on AI, I want to come up with a cool, you know, cybernetic look. I'm having trouble thinking of something that will look cool. I, I enter some prompts and I ask for that and I get it. And I'm like, all right, cool. I like that. The chance of me using it 100% are slim anyway, but if I like, you know, some of the lines, I like the cuts, I like how the, you know, the different technology is, you know, whatever the doodads, the doohickeys, I want to use that. I'll use that. Chances are I'm not going to do 100% of what I see there. I'm, maybe, but okay. So that's just a reference. I'm, I'm taking something from this and I'm using it. It's a reference. I do this all the time. And I think artists should do this all the time. I'm a comic book artist. I want to draw a Humvee. I should go onto Google and, and research and look at Humvees and then draw based on that reference that I see. And because if I make it up in my head, chances are it's going to look stupid. You know, the proportions might be a little off the, you know, there's so many nuances and little things I want to include on that Humvee. So you see that and you're like, that's a, that's a Humvee. That's, he did a great job on that Humvee. That's what I want. I, so reference is not a bad thing. I think Artists should use reference. If we want to draw something well, we should use reference. Okay. He says, moreover, the anti-AI people need to chill out a bit before they go for the pitchforks. I went through this crap with 3D technology. I studied 3D modeling and then later got into doing comics. The comic comics guys I was associating with were very staunchly traditional and using 3D at all was considered cheating. So I just did hand-drawn stuff in Photoshop for their contest, etc. But for years, I was getting idiots going, <coughs> excuse me, to my online gallery, seeing a mix of 3D and hand-drawn stuff, and then writing everything off as cheating. Cheating typically involved me modeling something from scratch in ZBrush. 
I was perfectly willing to show them the whole evolution of a picture from sketch to full rendering, but they could always just write off that as being fake. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I know guys who use, um, they use ZBrush and then I think Blender. And I, again, I don't understand the whole process. I haven't used those programs, but there's a lot of programs out there. Um, but what they would do is they would kind of have, I don't, I don't know if you can necessarily call it like a, you probably call it a model. They would use the model and then they would, they would create their scenes and then they would basically ink over that and, and make their scenes. Um, and it's funny because the, the one guy, I saw his artwork and it looked so familiar. It looked like someone else's that I know. And I contacted him. I'm like, dude, I'm like, did you do this? Cause this looks exactly like your artwork. And he's like, no, but I actually taught him and showed him how to do some stuff. And so this guy showed him how to do this. And like, they had like this exact identical style. And I think it's because they're using the same technology. They're using the same program and it, they're getting kind of like the same result and they'll just ink over it. Um, so, you know, and, and there again, okay, there's two parts to that. When I see that, I think, oh, wow, that looks cookie cutter. That looks like, it looks like a person, you know, it, the, the program part of it was easy to identify, but then they just put their own personal touch on it. You know, they inked it and then they colored it, um, which they're, these guys are excellent artists. So they used a program, then they put their personal touch on that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, okay. We do have tools. I don't think, I, I'm not going to say that AI programs um, are tools necessarily. I think you can use it as a tool, but some people don't use it as a tool. They just use it to pump out artwork that they want to slap their name on. Different scenario. So I don't have a, pro a problem with someone using a program and then, you know, to help to use as a tool and then, you know, putting their personal touch. They have, their hand has to touch a screen. They have to do something to it. Okay. Now. That all said, let's go here because, again, minutia. There's so many parts to this to pick apart and, and dive into. Here, if, if a guy used an AI program, they, they got an image of something, whatever. Let's say this, this guy's heap thing for the spawn contest. He pumps out this image uh, from the AI generator. He gets that image. And then he, he puts it in a program, and then he just draws over it and traces it. I'm going to say trace because he's, he's just going over what the program pumped out. Um, what about that? I, I think, okay, to me, that's like tracing. Um, then now the guy in the program that I mentioned, the ZBrush or the blender, he is creating all those models. They don't just appear. I think, I think, there might be presets and there might be, you know, human bodies and stuff that are pre-done, but seeing his, his, um, what he works with has a specific look that he has put on there. So in the program, he's creating these models and he is manipulating them to get his desired outlook. So though he is using a program, like a lot of it is him manipulating him, moving the different stuff. Okay. I want to make that distinction. If you're just putting something, uh, some prompts in, you're getting something from AI, and then you just draw over that and then just say like, oh, uh, like I drew this. I would have a hard time with that. That's basically like tracing. Um, and then, okay, let's let's talk about comic book art because a lot of guys, I've seen this, I've seen a guy draw like the flash that Jim Lee drew. He'll redraw it, um, you know, and then just like put his name on there. And he doesn't put after Jim Lee. Um, he just puts his name on it like he did that. So there again, you're taking credit for someone else's artwork and you're not giving them credit for it, you know, after Jim Lee or whatever. So you're you're a swiper, right? We call those people swipers and they're all over the place. I see this all the time. It's annoying, right? You you can't do that. So what about with AI art? You, you pump something out from this program and then you just kind of like trace over it like... Should they have to say after, you know, mid journey after blah, 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 AI program, like, right. I mean, that would be truthful. Um, 
yeah, there's there's so much <laughs> to go through with all this. Um, you know, how much of the AI do you have to change for it to actually be yours? Um, that's a good question. Um, man, yeah. So let me go down here. Um, Poe Gin Apples. I don't see the problem with AI art and why people are getting so hysterical. It's a way for writers who can't afford artists to get work out. And let's be honest, some artists charge massive amounts. I think a lot of the reaction, uh, I think a lot of the reaction is human vanity and reminds me of idiots who said samplers would end classical music. Um, that's, that's covering a lot of different stuff. Um, people are getting hysterical about it because a dude won a contest that you were not supposed to submit AI artwork or any kind of, you know, the rule stated they would not accept AI stuff. Someone submits something and it looks 100% AI generated. That's why people are up in arms. Everybody else followed the rules. Everybody else took the time to draw it like myself, like all these other guys. And they, they feel cheated. And you have this dude who just kind of comes out of nowhere, throws his, his artwork up and, you know, makes no apology about it. Like, F you guys, if you don't like it, blah, blah, blah. Has an attitude. Just seems like, like, dude, like, really? Um, I think that's why people are upset. That's that's why I'm upset. It's like, you cheated, bro. That's uh, that's it. 100%. You cheated. Um, It's a way for writers who can't afford artists to get work out. And let's be honest, some artists charge massive amounts. That's a whole nother topic. <clears throat> that we could get into, but that's that's another thing. Um, will AI art replace artists one day? Sure, it might, it could. Um, but that's a whole nother topic. We can't even we can't even get into that right now. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wanted to hit on those two real quick. I just there's so much to look at. There's a lot of minutia. Um, I can't get to everybody's comments, uh, but real quick, actually, there was a few. This guy, I wanted to share this. D. Hyde, 9780. This just pisses me off. I lost the use of my hand 15 years ago and wasn't able to draw. Had a great doc, figured it out. Surgery, two years later, healing, and now relearning. How do people feel accomplishment from typing some words and pictures appear? So here's a guy. He he can draw. He, you know, well, it, Yeah. And wasn't able to draw. So he's an artist. He, he is able to draw. Then all of a sudden he loses the uses of use of his hands. Excuse me. I can talk. I promise. And <clears throat> needs to get surgery and needs to fix it. But like, can you, can you like this dude like lost it? You don't realize how much, how valuable something is until you lose it. Right. Here's a dude who can draw. And then all of a sudden loses the use of, of his hand. Dude can't draw. Now, it'd be really easy for him, I would think, to be like, oh, I could go create art on some AI program, just type in some words, and hey, look at that. But no, this guy understands the the meaning of truly creating something. Um, and these people who are using AI, if they're 100%, okay, there are artists who use AI and you know will use it as a tool. They'll manipulate it. But if it's just 100% an AI image, that's totally different than I took this AI generated image and I used it in some way as reference or I manipulated it and made my own thing. If you're not putting any creative effort into it, it's not yours. It's this program's. So he says it perfectly. How do people feel accomplishment for, from typing some words and pictures appear? You get like a quick buzz like, oh, hey, look what I created. Kind of. You know, you didn't create it. <laughs> your 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 little words typing, you know, created it. Um, but it's it's not like you did that. A, a computer program did that, and I think that's where we need to make like draw that line. Me typing some words out, and then a picture appears. You're not you're not doing the hard work. You're not doing the creativeness that everybody else is doing. That is a true, legit artist. Okay. So anyway. That's all I got for you. Excited to hear more comments. Um, so much to go over, so much to talk about with this topic. But again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to look at the video, comment, and and again, I want to learn. I want to I want to hear what you guys think. 
and I want to make a um, an informed, rational decision, as I hope all you guys do. Um, but yeah, but something needs to happen. Something needs to to change going forward. So, anywho, thank you guys again. Till next time, peace.